I was born during the Second War, and in '39, and I was six years old. And when the war was over, so I grew up during the war. And there's nothing worse than I will never experience it. the worst thing in my life that I can experience now. Uh, it's nothing compared what children go through when during war. Coming from Germany after the war, going to Stuttgart, which was successful, also another language. America was a place that it's like going to the moon at that time, you know. And then suddenly being there with Balanchin, and that time Stravinsky was still alive, you know, and you, you see all this. And seeing children, I mean, seeing young people joining the company. Oh, Mr. Balanchin, I was a genius, you know. They took it like this, and I, I, I couldn't even speak to him. You know, and to them it was, oh, Mr. B, Mr. B. I, I just could never talk to him like this. I was mm. petrified of him. Mm. Not petrified, but it's in, in such awe that the people, people are not in awe of people anymore. He was a Balanchine dancer for a number of years, but I think his teaching was very Balanchinian because it was economy of movement. It was very forward thinking. It was progressive. It was musical and it was a lot about speed. Um, and so without having Balanchine myself, I felt that I got a really, um, good take on the ideas of Balanchine in his classes. It was very difficult. It wasn't the class. It was the essence of each thing we did today. You know, we would do like half an hour of but Montandries to the front side and back, a half an hour, 45 minutes, or then that was not bad, at least. But then some days we did fondues for 45 minutes, you know, and your legs were like, so we all had to come early and uh, And do a up. class before. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but uh, the horrifying thing for me at one point was, I've never seen people dance technically the way they did at that time. And there was always someone in the room, he would say, and someone would do the right thing. So it was actually up to the rest, including me, to do and learn what that person just did, because he was not very verbal. Mm. I mean, he knew what he wanted, and when you see his ballets, mm then you really know what he's teaching, he was teaching. But if he would have just been a teacher, he would have never made a career. See that it's a genius on top of genius. He had to choreograph to tell the world that he, as a teacher, is actually teaching something that the old schooling is, you have to take the best of the thing and then you update. Also physically we know more Mm -hmm. about ballet. Before it was really an art and this and that, you had the feeling and this and then it was all almost kitsch in a way. Mm -hmm. I mean you were a little too young for that, but I know. And when I look back now and and it really it's people don't want to let go. Mm -hmm. It's such a hybrid of balancing and uh, but yet his own methodology, uh, his own timing and phrasing and, and but yet it is all about creating an artist. You could feel his passion in the room. You could feel how much ballet meant to him and to all of the people taking his class. I have taken Willie's class just a handful of times and in all honesty, he scared the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> he, you know, he never scared the crap out of me because I met him when I was 14 years old and uh, I just came to New York. I didn't know who he was, but for most people and his pianist, and it doesn't matter, it, it can be very intimidating, very. Yeah, definitely. He's, uh, you know, he's scary the first few times. Uh, yeah, I remember clearly crying the first class. He was in charge. You know, he really kept 
charge. So that was, that was a bit of there. He there was an old world quality of Willie, which you know comes from his European roots. So there was that sort of you know I am you know the captain of this ship, which was very strong. Of course, uh, having this German man presence. You know, in the studio, you'll do what he said. <laughs> My first meeting with Willie. Well, I think I watched his class from the doorway before I actually stepped foot in there. Uh, he was so intimidating to me. You know, it, it was very fast paced. I looked in the room, Alexander Ferry's in there, Julio Boca, Wendy Whalen, you know, all these people that I was just like, I can't go in there. You know, it was a, a very intimidating atmosphere. So at first, I was so intimidated to take his class because you would look through those doors and see all of the who's who of dance in New York City. So that in itself is intimidating. And he was very clear with what he wanted to see. But that's something that I enjoyed about his class is that he had very clear theory on musicality, on body placement, and it, 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 it didn't waver. And so like, I kind of knew what I needed to work on in his class, and I found that it really worked for, for my body. They're either afraid or they like you. Mm -hmm. The respect is something that I think everybody should learn. And not always say, you know, I mean, learning is difficult. I hated being in school, every minute of it. And like you too, you grew up, you know, we couldn't do some things that people, you young people can do today. But I'm glad that I went through. Ballet is still the same. If you don't do the ground rules, mm -hmm. you can. Times change, mm -hmm. but you have to still know. And physicality is really everything. When you gave him your commitment to his ideas and his work ethic, the generosity that he gave back to us um, was quadruple fold. He paid us back with information through our commitment. And I think knowing that that level is in this day and age often less and less because there's the politically correctness that we're, we're trying to abide by more and more, which is of course very important. Uh, but but there was a generation when it was, that was overlooked for better or for worse. Um, but the power of that commitment and directness um, and uh, requirement from a student um, is something that is profound and very, very powerful. Um, it was, it was a, a sense of religious fervor in his class, which I really appreciated. At the same time, I couldn't learn a single combination because he never really showed the combination. Everyone just knew it from taking his class so often. He's really a wonderful mentor, but really strict. The, 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 one of the things that I like the most about his class is that he treated everybody equal. He treated everybody equal. It was a, it was a, almost like a, like going to church. It was a, a, a very unique experience that you know you don't see. I had it with my teacher when I was a, a student, and and what I what I, it captivated me about Willie is that I felt sort of the same the same respect for this man, you know. Um, he was a wonderful. Uh, he had wonderful heart, and he was so giving. But in his class you know, you would not get away with a lot. And I like that. I like that report. I, obviously his, his methods and, and, you know, we had many conversations about it. And, you know, it's the, the first few days, I think I cried. <laughs> first of all, because I didn't know the combinations and I was so lost, you know, I barely spoke English and, and, and this man, you know, looked at me with his piercing eyes and, you know, he was giving me a hard time. And I was like, why is he mean to me? But he wasn't mean. He, he cares, you know. I was not one of Willie's students, but I, of course, I took classes with him many times, and um, I loved him very much. He was uh, very always so warm, and always asked about my husband, and asked about my children, and asked, you know, just very, very human, and never, 
you know, he always taught me in his class. So obviously I would just, I would take it from time to time. And he would always give me tons of corrections and try to get me, you know, and I just really appreciated that he, he was a teacher. He, he had a student in his class, no matter who it was, and he tried to teach them something of value. And I think that that was a, um, I think that said so much about him. Um, and is a common thing among great ballet teachers. The structure of the class, you started with, you know, obviously plies and the, his tendu facing the bar, kind of warmed up your hips, loosened you up, got you on your leg. And it just, you could always, I always felt like I could feel every muscle in my leg. And I knew how, what he wanted when he would say, you know, go come from the other leg. I understood because I was already there. He structured it in a way that you knew exactly how to get on your leg. And I remember him saying, you know, when we got to the center, I was kind of falling all over the place. And I had like a great bar and I was just like, I don't understand, you know, I can't get on my leg. And he's like, that's what class is for. He's like, you try everything here. And then when you get on stage, you're there, you know. And um, I think you, you had to be okay with him making fun of you if you were not doing something right. Um, not that he would make fun, but I think that he would... Um, try to steer you in a better direction and without, without making you feel bad about yourself, but you wanted to, you know, you wanted to get what he wanted. You know, it was like your goal to understand exactly how he wanted you to execute that step. And even if you couldn't, he'd be like, okay, you know, all right, you know, we'll try it again. And every day, you know, sometimes you had to be told repeatedly. And it was many years later where I felt like, um, I finally understood what he was asking for. It doesn't just happen overnight, you know? And so when people wouldn't take consistently and you'd come in and come out, it was hard to kind of grasp exactly what he was going for. He was there for you and you needed to be there for him. That's how it worked. Um, Willie will teach you and will take things out of you the best possible way if you were there for him. Um, so it was a teacher that um, not only taught you steps and how to do them, but it taught you how to be present and do the best for yourself. That idea of committing 100%, um, which, is, which is what ballet requires, you know, to get to the highest level. And that's what he was asking for. He was asking, he was, he was offering excellence and he was he was demanding excellence. You have to give everything. You have to strip yourself and you, you have to be honest. And I think people are so afraid. And, and it's not so much that the, the dancers are afraid, it's the direction, the choreographers and they have all part of this. And teachers, you know, fall, try something, let me see you, look alive. It's like I told you, finally got some color in your cheeks. You see, it's like you have to be alive when you do things. The only thing is someone can say, oh, that's a little bit too much. But if you haven't given anything, I have no corrections for you. You see, if you have a different, let's say you do a variation, you there, all right? And you do it full out and you have conviction and this and that. And then I say, well, maybe we should try this. You can give me an argument. And then I might think, think it over. And then we come to another agreement. And that's how the art should be. I showed up at his class on a Saturday morning. Um, I had my, my debut that, that afternoon or evening. Um, and I was, so I was ready for anything. And it was packed, the class. The sun was so bright. And I was standing um, at one of the sidebars and it was like the second combination and he came right over to me and I was of course messing up because he was giving his combination so fast and I didn't know what the steps were and he said it's okay it's okay if you mess up the step just don't mess up the intention and the intention is to get your weight over your supporting leg so it was all about you know it's okay but but focus on the, on this so I felt um, inspired that I could make mistakes, but yet 
go for the idea. And, and, and I, that was it. He always said to me, if you learn to dance fast, you can dance slow easily. But if you dance slow all the time, it's very hard to move your leg fast and your heart. His fast was very fast and his slow was slow. Um, and, and so he really knew how to mix these two tempos, um, how a body needed to be. If you were going to be fast, you needed to be fast. Um, and that's how you build a class, by these two rhythms um, meeting, meeting each other. Um, so the, the speed that he gave you on your legs and, and his way of thinking how, how to move from leg to leg, uh, where that movement started, actually. Um, many times when you have to move forward, you will think, okay, I have my leg in front, so I'm going to step with that leg in front that I have in front of me. Um, and his mind will say, no, your back leg is moving you forward. It always made everything feel like I was using the right muscles. When you're trying to move really fast, which I need to for New York City Ballet, and you're doing these really fast tendus, I felt like I was always using my upper thigh to get my leg in fast and my feet and trying to get everything right. And the way he explained it, and he'd be like, you're on one side or the other. You're never in the middle. You know, he's like, we don't have three legs. We have two. You're on one or the other. And everything coming from that standing leg it just made so much sense to me. And it didn't in the beginning, I, I heard him, but it took a long time for it to compute down. Stanley Williams had sort of, that did say something very interesting. And I, when I was a dancer, and uh, that's probably what's going on here too. Sometimes we think we're listening, but we're not really listening mm -hmm. when we study. This is for you guys. There's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong with it. Because he said we have one leg with two ends. Never made any sense to me. Well, I understand the one leg, but where are the two ends? One end, one end. The opposite. They are connected. I see what you mean. So you go there, and this is working. Mm -hmm. Then you step on this, and they are not separated here. It's an extension that goes into your toes. It's when I said about the attitude, for instance. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't bend. We pull our toes in, and it's really, this should be the feeling of round, mm -hmm. not cornered. Through People the have a better feeling in the front, actually, in general. But to the back, everybody goes one bend before they even hit back. Mm -hmm. But if you take it out of your left leg, you know exactly where that's supposed to go. See, everything is round. Mm -hmm. The minute it's, the only time the body is flat to me is when you turn. We walk, right? Normally, we walk, cross, you know? Uh, so he say, in ballet, we do the same, the only difference we not put our heel first, we put our toes first. <laughs> you know, uh, but we're still walking like in the street. <laughs> it's like you don't walk with your right leg and left leg, you walk left and right. It's like, right? You saw that, right? No, I'm talking not to you, you got that. But I mean, I'm talking to the observers. It is so simple. People don't teach simple stuff anymore. Say, oh, Mr. Bouncing, it's New York City Bar. People go one, two. It's not one, two. You still have to go round, and then by the end of the extension, you don't go into the... You, you keep this part front. Mm -hmm. You see, you work for the opposition. You take mm -hmm. your toes onto your left side, and you go wide open in passé. That means you have to just face this way, fourth position. Now relevate. You see? Mm -hmm. You do once more. You're going on to your left hip. Yes. And this is make you turn. Mm -hmm. See, you're setting yourself up. You're going from here, you go there and there. And this knee goes back and this 
goes all the way down there to mm -hmm. the bounds. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're turning here, and here you don't turn in the middle. So you're allowing it, you're giving yourself the freedom to turn. Well, if people would just say, thank you, to address someone when you turn, that helps tremendous. Address somebody. Sure. If if I go from here to to, then I I will address them. I already have a different feeling, and I'm going here to the corner and trying to do three pirouettes. Mm -hmm. When you're turning, uh, you know, if you want to turn more, if it's someone uh, call you, someone from behind of you call your name, you're supposed to go turn your heads, right? Turn and then your body. So why in period you go this way to the other way around? <laughs> you don't go like, Julio, and you go, hi, <laughs> you know? So, so that's a little thing. And the beginning for me was like, what's he talking about? You know, what, what, what's, uh, what's he have in his mind? So when I tried it and I went like, wow, I can do one, two more periods because of that. You know, I can finish that period and finish in my high passe relevé. And with that little details, you know, See, there's something in turns which uh, people don't really teach, and I don't know where I got this or where I picked this up, because no one taught me. Because I always thought I couldn't turn till I read and, uh, went to Mr. Bouncing and Stanley Williams. He would say, don't turn. Now, if you tell someone, don't turn, what do they do? He never explained himself. Stanley. Stanley. Hmm. He wanted you to flip and then stay there. Mm -hmm. That means the first one is not a turn. See, the first one is a setup to turn. Mm -hmm. But he never said that. So we the, have to figure it out. And then the rest is a balance, right? No, but the balance. Getting on that leg. The balance is the speed of the head makes the balance. The, speed, the spot. No, the minute you spot, really, you're already a brief second late. You don't really spot. You just go. You see, the minute you spot, if I do a spot, I'm, the body has already so much momentum that I'm going to be late for the next one. And it is a spot, but if you teach a spot, people stop the movement of the head. And then they wonder that they cannot do the second and third turn. See, once this big thing of ours stops, the rest of the body will not do it. The head. It's the head. You see, you can be totally, I mean, you see natural dancers, they're totally off, but the speed gets them straight on. But we were taught in the old days, and people are still t are teaching this, that you actually balance and turn. And I think Mr. B and, and Stanley Williams that I've got across, I don't know if anybody else taught that in the world, they wanted us to go into the ground and be very free in the turn. With other words, we go back where we came from, right? Relevant into the ground, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. taking a balance around. Mm -hmm. That's the way we were taught. Mm -hmm. That's why we look so awful sometimes. <laughs> People still clap, though. <laughs> I really wanted to go back to Dance Theatre of Harlem and finish my career the way that I had started. I wanted to, I wanted to end it the way that I intended, that's what I meant to say. Uh, but I hadn't been working on point for four years. And so uh, something about his class, it was so strengthening and empowering and inspiring. When you got it, like you knew you got it, you know? When I started dancing, I mean, people would always you were, I'm probably taught that way too. Even for the men, we went from demi point, off point, and then to. Demi point? And slightly off point, not on point because oh. we didn't have point shoes on. Oh. There was, to get this part stronger, mm -hmm. you had to put more, push more. Yeah. Now, people, women, they stand straight like this, they point their instep. Mm -hmm. How do you express yourself if you stand like this? Yeah. See, you can only express yourself if you really have, if you sit there, 
right? We're sitting in our fanny here, mm -hmm. solid, mm -hmm. and we can express ourselves, mm -hmm. right? Now, if we were like this, after five minutes, we would be breathing. Mm -hmm. It's that simple mm -hmm. to me. We connect from the floor mm -hmm. to this part. Mm -hmm. And then the rest takes care of itself. Worked together then, and it was really, really beautiful. He, his way of, his way of, um, again, of, of putting the steps to music was really quite, quite incredible, you know. Um, it was not about, uh, you know, if, if there was a series of jumps, it wasn't about doing everything big. It was about what you will do small so then you can spring up into the air and to make something more exciting. And I think that um, it was such a great quality that he had, you know. Let's say you, there was Donizetti variation, you had a problem with each, any step. Mm -hmm. He would make it work that it works with the music first, not just change because he cannot do it. It was also musically. Mm -hmm. Now people just change the steps. Mm -hmm. And the musicality has changed. The, to me, the accent that Mr. B changed, not changed basically, which is natural, is like we sit today, making a relevé going into the ground and the plié going up and not down. Now everything is the old way, the old fashioned way. You go in plié and you do relevé, which is physically mm -hmm. not, not right. Willie never was comfortable. All the time was long and stay up, you know. Uh, things like uh, you go to demi plié and you're thinking, okay, you have to go down. No, he always say go up even if you go down. So you go down, you have to go up. One day I will get a doctor and I will document it because it has to be documented because it's, it's dumb, really. We always went out, 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 out. There was never the, I mean, the, the in is so important mm. before you go out, mm. you know, and that makes, when you take the mountain, you have danced the mountain mm. ballets. Mm. They're all so, about that. Yes. But you saw here today, it's, it's all about you know, being on your leg. He was, and I hate to say this, he was very organic, mm -hmm. because that word is so overused. He, it was difficult, it was never wrong for the body. Julio used to come here to Spain to guests and I would watch him as a kid. And when I watched him with ABT, when I, when I got there, I noticed a huge difference in his body and the way that his line was so lengthened and, uh, and his work, he, has, he had really um, incredible methods. I mean, I, I apply so many when I teach and when I do my own class. Um, it's, it's changed my, uh, the way I looked at dance, definitely coming from Europe. You know, I took this class and at the beginning it's weird, like everything, like every change, you know. But, um, but I applied so many things and it helped me. I remember, you know, when I took Willie, when I had a show, I was golden. I was so in my leg, you know, and you hear that a lot. So suddenly I start getting a little more confidence with him. So I asked him if he can teach me class before the shows on uh, the Met. Uh, so he accepted that. And we start that relationship that we have for over, over like 22 years when I was a professional, okay? And then we continue as a friend until uh, he passed away. It was always a, a teacher-student relationship. It was never um, familial. It was always about work. And it, and it was, you know, he was an uncle through work. You know, it, was, it wasn't a, a level of personal that, that went beyond um, ballet, truly. And that was fine with me, and it was okay. He was... A wonderful friend. He always asked about my husband and my son, and it was great when we would go on tours to um, Tom Gold used to do um, tours to France and the south of France, and Willie would always come and and join us and teach our class, and we hang out at night a little bit. You know, he was very strict on his schedule. You know, it was I think he would be in bed by ten. You know, he had a very routine of what he would do, and you know, during the day. Um, but it was so nice because he was. He loved to laugh. I love to make him laugh. Um, and I would try to do that in class as well. I, you know, he brought out a silly side in me. And sometimes if the atmosphere in class was getting a little bit too, 
like, ooh, you know, I would just say something and he would, you know, giggle. And it was, he was just a, he was a wonderful person. And I think he was intimidating because it was Willie Berman, oh, you know, and when, when I first came to New York, I was like, I'm not taking his class. I'm not taking his class. It was scary. But, you know, once you get in there and you really understand that this man is just really wants to help every single person in that room and, you know, probably got more frustrated when we didn't understand than we did. Um, but really, really um, down to earth and, you know, just the passion and um, love he had for this art form was incredible. When I was going to gala, so travel with my company or guesting in another company and, uh, around the world, I always took him because for me, Willie, uh, first, uh, it was my teacher, of course, but pass through the years, sometimes it was like my father. You know, I, I, my father now recognized me when I was uh, little, when I was born. born. Uh, so I took him as, you know, my mentor, everything. So, of course, depends on the of the day or the pence of the year, little by little from that father came a, a friend. And, uh, and of course, uh, my teacher for life, uh, he changed, he changed me, he changed my body. Uh, he changed the way I was walking, the way I was to understand dancing. If you have two beautiful dancers doing their thing and they're beautiful separately, and if when they get together, if that is not sensational, then the whole thing is kaput. And it has to do um, with the partner also. I mean, you remember Julio, yeah. Julio Boca, which I had the fortune to work with for a while. He would take anybody and it would work. Another boy would have problems with each person. It's the musicality. The man has to go into the musicality of the lady if he likes it or not. But the ladies also have to have musicality. See, if you, if you would go and you go tombe, pas de boy, pique, and I know exactly where that is. Now, if you go tombe, pas de boy, and pique right over here, I expected you to be there. So already there is, you understand what I'm saying, right? It's, it's a, partnership is very difficult, but it's one of the most rewarding things if you really like it. I mean, if you see Swan Lake or any full-length ballet and the chemistry is not there, why even watch it? Just for the variations? No, it's not. That's why a lot of people are disinterested in ballet, because you see, it's like, Chemistry is chemistry. So you, you cannot explain that. There were a couple classes where I, I remember being in there with him and I could see that something wasn't right. And we had all encouraged him to, you know, can you sit down? Can we get you some water? Can, you know, and he was very stubborn. He was like, nope, I'm fine. You know, he wouldn't, he didn't want to acknowledge anything was wrong and he was very proud. And, um, which are wonderful qualities, but, you know, we, we, Looking back, you know, we, we now I think, wow, well, if he had, you know, maybe just taken some time or gotten some of the help that he needed for his, his illness, you know, maybe we could have had him around a little bit longer. You know, with Willie, uh, in a way, he always had that distance. Uh, but I know, and I know he know that we love each other, you know, and he had that, that feeling like, father and son and friend and, and but uh, I never have, I don't know why, even in the past, you know, even in the last years that uh, I could never have that, you know, that, that, that talking. Even when I saw him um, last time in February, uh, he waited for me to go before he was standing up from sitting because he no want me to see him that he you know and uh you know that he have that proud so 
and I understand and I respect that. And I think that's the other thing. Uh, when he was in front of me, you know, you have that respect so much that you never can cross that uh, moment. I saw him at either the end of February or early March um, at Steps. And I wasn't taking his class anymore because of a number of reasons. One of them being that I'm, I'm working with New York City Ballet and, and I often have to get to the theater uh, for meetings during his class time. So I take the earlier class, which is also slightly gentler on the body, let's just say. Um, but I, will, I would always touch base with him and give him a hug or, or have a little conversation chat with him before I went to my class. And I, I remembered saying, um, your birthday's coming up. You know, April 3rd, your birthday. We always love to celebrate birthdays in his classes. And uh, he gave me a little, little nod. Um, and unfortunately, he didn't make it to that birthday. But that was our last, um, our last talk was about, you know, celebrating his birthday. He would have been 81. Right before steps closed down, I had taken, um, I took class. I actually hadn't taken his class. I was injured. So I got injured in December and I was coming back from an injury and I kept saying to him, I would see him, I'd go in the room next door in like a slower pace class. And I would say, you know, Willie, I'm going to get back in your class. I said, I'm just not ready yet. You know, and he was like, it's okay. He's like, as long as, you know, he was, I think it was hard for him when he wouldn't take his class. It was, you know, he, he was a little bit hurt by that. And that was hard for me. Um, cause I didn't want to hurt him cause he had done so much for me and, was such a mentor in my life. Um, but yeah, I was really sad that I wasn't able to take his class before, before the pandemic. And also, you know, before his passing, it was, it was my goal. Um, the injuries that I've had over the last like couple years have been hard to get into his class because it is a faster paced class. Um, but I was always like, okay, when I can do Willie's class, I know I'm in really good shape and I would make it back there before I get on stage. Um, but you know, your body's change and you know, you have to do what you want to do. But I, it was really hard for me to know that I didn't get back into his class. Um, and you know, we've lost him since then, but I did have a, a pleasant exchange with him, you know, and, and he just said, he always asked about my son, Dylan, and how's Dylan doing? And, you know, how are you guys doing with all of this news going on? You know, I think that was our last conversation was talking about COVID and, um, and he was just concerned for our safety, which, you know, he was very giving and, you know, nurturing. And, you know, and I said, are you okay? You know, do you think that you should, you know, not be here anymore and just kind of go home and take care of yourself. But he was, he was gonna, he didn't want, he was German, you know, he was like, nothing's going to stop me. I'm going to be at steps until they close it down. And, you know, even as his illness, he was not going to give up. I arrived in, uh, in Uruguay and home on March 3rd. And then, uh, and then uh, a couple of days later, I, they told me about, uh, he had to go to the hospital and, and blah, 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 blah. And, uh, and I have also the privilege, because I know it was a very hard moment in New York in that time with the pandemic, with the virus. Um, so a few have the chance to talk to him. So I call him in the hospital. And of course, the nurse, so thanks to her, uh, uh, she was hang, uh, hanging the, the phone. So I was talking to him. Of course, he couldn't talk to me, answer me. Uh, but he, he can at least listen to me, to my voice. So at least I have the chance to say, I love you, come on, we're going to go out of this, you know, just give it the energy. Uh, and then, well, uh, everybody knows what happened after that. And so I was kind of, in a way, sounds strange, though, but in a way I was so happy to, to see him to have the chance to see him and to talk to him. Because, you know, with this, if it was in another moment, I took the flight and got flight to New York, you know, just to be with him. But you couldn't do that in this process of this. So um, I was very kind of relieved for that, to have that moment uh, with him. Steps. 
will never be the same. Um, having lost David Howard and Willie Berman, um, that was such an amazing time. They left their mark, you know, it's, Willie was, um, an, he was an amazing teacher. And I think someone that will influence me for the rest of my life and the way I teach, the way I think about things, the way I carry myself, just even walking down the street. Um, you know, he wanted you to be proud, you know, Let, open your heart. I, I had wonderful teachers, wonderful coaches, but I never quite had that, you know, umbilical cord connection with some, with anybody except uh, Willie. The amount of dedication that he gave to his class and his combinations was so thought out and presented in such a way that it made sense. And you always left there, his room inspired. I always felt like I could do anything for the rest of the day. I was ready to go. We haven't felt it because we're home now, but I think that he's gonna, we're gonna feel his loss uh, very deeply when we, you know, go back. When, especially if you go to Steps uh, on Broadway uh, quite often, I think that you'll miss his presence there a lot. Yeah, it's been, I don't know if I'm gonna really feel like it's real until I step back into Steps and really, see him not sitting on that bench, you know, and with his roller and he'd be there so early warming up for class. He was so dedicated. He'd get there an hour before class and he would do, you know, all his exercises and make sure he knew his, knew his class. And it was um, really amazing. And I think it, you know, it's what he lived for every day. He was a true master. And I, w I went back, and I went back, and I went back, and I went back for the next 25 years, every day, 